stitchers or floss tubers or anybody else who found their way to my video today. Uh, I hope you're all having a wonderful fall day. I guess it's not fall everywhere in the world, but here in the States it's fall. And I decided to give you a little bit of um, my fake fireplace to enjoy while you're watching my video. And hopefully maybe you even have your needle going and you're doing some stitching right now, which is even better. As promised, I'm going to do a whips video today, but first I want to, I, I made some notes this time with my butterfly laden notebook here. <laughs> I was using this for something else and it had some writing on it, so I went a little overkill with the but butterfly uh, stickers, three dimensional butterfly stickers that is. Um, so yeah, a little bit overkill with that, but I don't know, it kind of looks nice. So anyway, I made some notes because uh, the last video I did, I was in a hurry and I didn't have a chance to welcome all my subscribers. I am, I, I am overwhelmed. This is just so awesome that people are subscribing to me and liking my videos and commenting and I don't know, it's just very cool. I love it. So if you have uh, done any of that, watched, commented, liked, subscribed to my channel, I'm thrilled. Welcome. Um, I'm really enjoying doing them and I'm really enjoying everybody's videos too, which brings me to my next point. If uh, does anybody know how it seemed a little bit unorganized on flo on uh, YouTube how to find when somebody new is making floss, floss tube videos? So uh, if I feel like there was somebody that had a um, a thread attached to their video that if you were making a floss tube video you can have your name added to that, but I can't for the life of me find who or where that was. Um, so or if if. I can't tell who is subscribed to me, but if you can tell if I'm subscribed to you and you see that I'm not, please leave your your channel in my comments um, because I would love to subscribe. I have probably about, I feel like I have about 40 or 50 that I'm subscribed to already, but I know that there's probably more being added every day. So I would love to subscribe to you if I'm not already subscribed to you. So please let me know. Um, second, I would like to apologize for my first video that at the beginning of it it's so choppy. Uh, it was my first video that I was making and I ended up just talking really randomly just going going off talking about stuff in a really unrandom way or random way I should say. Either way nonetheless it was not the way I wanted it to be so I ended up cutting about 10 minutes of video out of that the beginning of it and it ended up being really choppy so I apologize for that. Another thing I wanted to talk about is um, the editing software. When I made my first video, I don't know how most of you record, maybe you use your cell phones and I know a lot of you don't even edit your videos, you just bring them, you know, put them right up, which which is fine, I'll probably do that, but I feel like I always need to do some editing toward the end of mine because I either, like right now, have to go blow my nose because I feel like I'm coming down with a cold, so <laughs> I have to pause that, but anyway, um, editing software. I had a really old version of iMovie 9. Now I'm recording on my MacBook Pro right now. And I just went right into, I opened up iMovie and started recording. And then when I went to go edit it, I found that my my talking, the audio wasn't in sync with my voice, with my mouth. So it was off by about a minute and I couldn't edit it or do anything with it. So I um, did a little bit of research and it sounded like that was a lot of, uh, kind of a common problem with iMovie 9, I mean iMovie 11, but I had iMovie 9, a really old version of it. So anyway, I decided just for that video, because I really needed to edit it, that I would download a trial version of Final Cut Pro. So I did, and I'm using that trial version right now, and it's about to run out. It has about 10 days left. So, um, but since then, I had to upgrade my operating system I guess to Mavericks in order to download Final Cut Pro and then when I did that I found that I could upgrade my iMovie to for free to a more newer version so it seems to be okay so I think I'm gonna just go ahead and use iMovie after this but like I said I'm gonna try to get to the point that I don't have to do much editing but I like to add my little intro into it so um, anyway um, I think that were those were the only notes that I had to do before I get started this video may contain my whips and my stash potentially because I don't have a lot. I, I used to think I had a lot until I started watching Floss Tube videos 
And I realize now that I have more than some of you, but there's a lot of you that I don't have as much as. So I feel like, wow, maybe I even have some room to go shopping for more stuff because I don't, I'm not doing too bad. Um, can't remember who you are out there that had about a hundred over a hundred whips, and you're doing your your videos in alphabetical order. Excuse me, I have got to go blow my nose. Excuse me. Okay, sorry about that. Um, where was I saying? Yes, somebody had over a hundred whips, and they're doing them in alphabetical order. So I think that's awesome. <laughs> I don't have that many, but I think that's awesome that you do, or if you do. So okay, but before I get with my whips, I did uh, got another finish in after my last fin my first video which were my finishes but this one didn't have very much i had started it last year and all i had left to do were the sunflowers and i just pulled that out and started working on it and finished it up and this is it hold that up i'm trying to sit so that the window is shining on me so that i can have good lighting for these but we'll have to see how that turns out so I don't want it to be too dark. Let me hold that there. This was a pattern called Autumn Basket, I think. Oh gosh, I was going to write that down. I keep forgetting to write down these these patterns. I got it from a Just Cross Stitch magazine, um, I believe fall of 2013, if anybody's interested in doing that pattern. But yes, I just finished this and in the pattern, the original pattern, I should have grabbed it, it actually has it outlined, backstitching, outlining the entire thing, and it used sort of a darker gray color of floss, and I didn't really like the way that looked. I thought that it gave the the piece sort of an, an I don't know if it's a word, outline-y look to it that I didn't like, and then I thought maybe I should outline it, you know, do the backstitching with colors, maybe just a darker shade, darker than the, than the color I used, but... Um, I went ahead and I backstitched the handle, around the handle, and the, the wire of the handle there, and I backstitched the threads, I mean the stems, and the stem on the pumpkin, and I backstitched the center of the sunflowers. And I don't know, I think I'm going to leave it just as it is. I think it looks fine. And since it's for me, I'm not giving it away, it's for me, I, if I'm happy with it, I guess that's all that matters. So I'm going to call this one done. Harvest Basket, Just Cross Stitch Magazine, Fall 2013, I believe. So, you just need to, yes, I, I tape my edges only because I don't have my sewing machine handy at the moment. I'm actually going to, uh, I think I did search, I did pull it out to do some searching, but you know, I don't know. I don't see anything wrong with taping edges because I'm going to cut that all off anyway. So, up to this point, I've always taped my edges unless I've gotten some fabric from uh, you know, online, some specialty fabric that already has the edges surged, but, um, yeah, I don't have a problem with taping. Oh, and, and, um, I know somebody was asking to see the backs. You can see my back here. I'm not ashamed to show my backs. I'm of the camp that I always start a project making my back look nice, but by the time I'm done, I don't care about it anymore. And a lot of times those long threads that you see carried across the back. Oh, this one's actually not too bad. I've got a worse looking back than this one. But a lot of times, oh, it's because I haven't backstitched it yet. When I backstitch, I'm usually so done, I just pull those threads straight across two, three inches at a time because I'm just done with the backstitching and I want to get it done and it's tedious to keep stopping and starting. So, yeah, actually, because there's not a lot of backstitching, this one looks okay in the back. I have some, I'll show you some that I could where I've backstitched and the threads have just ran right across. But yeah, you know, I don't really care about the back, but part of me in the back of my head says you should care about the back, but I don't really care about the back. That's where I fall in with that. Okay, on to my oldest whip that I should have this done by now. If you remember, I'm the one that loves birds, so I do a lot of bird stitching and fall stitching. So. This is one by Dimensions called Chickadees on a Branch. Now, after I did my bird seasons, the one that I had in my first video that was framed, which by the way, I thought that was a Dimensions kit. Somebody has informed me that it's, it, 
it wasn't a dimensions kit. It was made by JCA and that it's no longer available. I guess it's out of print now. So I feel fortunate that I stitched that when I did. So if any of you are looking for that, I guess she said she tried to look. Um, I did browse eBay for it just after I got that comment. If you're the one that commented, Barbara, I think is your name. Um, I looked on eBay and I think I saw some reasonably priced ones. I think one was for $9 or something. So I don't know if anybody wants to snatch those up if you were interested. It seemed like a lot of you liked it. Um, anyway, after I finished that for Christmas, both my boys bought me uh, cross-stitching kits for Christmas and this was one of them. And when I opened it up, I realized it was a stamped project and I had never done stamped. I didn't really know if I liked it or didn't like it. So I started working on it and it was horrendous. I had such a hard time. I couldn't get, I couldn't get the needle through the fabric. I don't, I don't know why. I mean, I tried using a bigger needle. I tried using um, not as many strands as it called for. But every time I pulled the needle through, it just made this, this, like popping sound, and I had to struggle, struggle getting the needle up and down every time. I got a blister on my thumb. My thumb was sore. I was getting carpal tunnel. I thought, oh, there's got to be something else. So that actually is what led me to um, the cross-stitch forum. I think I logged in there and I was just desperately asking for help. And somehow along the way, I some somebody had said, maybe I should try to swap out the fabric or maybe I came up with that idea on my own. I don't know. But I really wasn't experienced in using other fabrics or swapping out fabrics because I hadn't found the forum yet, which since then, this was 2010 I started this. Since then, I've been a part of that forum, the Cross Stitch Forum, which is wonderful. If any of you are members of that, you probably recognize my name from there. But um, I have learned so much about cross stitching since I've been on that forum. I feel like, you know, it, I've just really grown as a stitcher because of all the wonderful ladies on that on that on that uh, forum. So, anyway, back to my whip. I decided uh, to go to Joann's or wherever and get some even weave because I thought well maybe I can do that now this is a stamped project and because the way it's charted it actually you know it, it actually can be transferred on regular fabric you don't actually need the stamped piece because it tells you what color you need and it, should, it has a, a chart of where to put the X's so I bought some even weave and I started the project over and I loved it I thought it was awesome as I found out now though that the the even weave I'm using is, I think, MGM Textiles, which I have had terrible luck with their fabric ever since then, and I don't tend to buy that anymore. But this is how it looks on even weave. Right there. Oh, and I did it on a much smaller count, too. So the original pattern, I think, was going to be like twice as big as this or something. So um, let me. All I have left to do on this is the back stitching. And. Some of the back stitching it calls for couching, and I think I mentioned in my other video that a couple of times I've had to deal with couching, and I was sort of I was afraid of it, so that's why I never did it on this. So I sort of put this in a bag, and it's not going to take me long. I can probably back stitch this in an afternoon. I've had some experience with couching, so I think I could do it okay now. I don't know why I just haven't finished this, but I need to get this out of my whip pile and into my finished pile. So here's a close up. Oh. Yeah, the satin stitches, I had to do some satin stitching on these little berries, and that was sort of hard to do on even weave, because on regular fabric you can kind of poke it in anywhere you need to and make it look nice. But on this, because it had specific holes, it was a little harder to get my berries round. But in real life, I mean, there is no perfect berry, I don't think. Well, maybe there is, but anyway. <laughs> I try to tell myself these things so that I can live with my mistakes. So here it is. Um, my screensaver keeps coming on. So, I want to see. I don't know if this is going to focus, but there's sort of how it looks. Chickadees on a branch from Dimensions. My oldest whip in my stash. That same Christmas, my other son uh, had given me this other lovely project that I hate to say is still in my whip pile. And this one, many of you, I think a few of you out there are actually working on this. Feasting, Feasting Frenzy by Dimensions. Such a colorful, beautiful kit. I think I might have mentioned I love bird houses, 
bird feeders. I, I don't know what I'm going to do with all the bird houses and bird feeders, bird projects that I make, but they're just really fun to stitch. This one, I kind of just see it as a little mini finish, kind of like those of you that are working on 99 bottles. This is like my, you know, my version of that because each little bird is just kind of like you feel like you're kind of getting a little finish with each one. So I'll show you how. I didn't start this one right away, so this hasn't actually been in my stash since 2000. I mean, it's been in my stash since 2010, but it hasn't been in my whip pile since then. I don't know when I started this, maybe just a year or two ago. So here's where I'm at with that. Now, I've learned my lesson. I backstitch as I go along. I will never save all the backstitching for the end again. If I had saved all the backstitching for the end of my butterfly project, I can tell you it would still be sitting there. Same with this one. There's so much backstitching, and unless you love it, I don't, I don't really like to spend time doing it, but taking it a little bits at a time. So each time I finish a bird, I backstitch it. So here's how that looks so far. This is on 18 count Ada that came with the project. There. And I know why I put this one away and stopped working on it. It's because if you look on the pattern, see these lines that are backstitched on the on the roof there? I was having a hard time backstitching that because in a lot of dimensions kits, the backstitching don't they doesn't just have you go over one stitch at a time or two stitches at a time. They do these long stitches. Well, when I backstitch was trying to backstitch that on here. It didn't, you know, I was just trying to do maybe smaller, you know, chunks like that, but it, it had kind of a, you know, rigid look to it, and it didn't look smooth like the lines, like I wanted them to look, but of course if I stretched the fabric all the way from here to here, then you just had that dangly piece of thread on top, and I just didn't know how to make it look good, and I sort of lost my steam on it because I didn't want to go any further until I figured out what to do with that, and then one day I just had an epiphany, so when I go back to this, I know what I'm going to do. Since I have experience couching now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the fabric, I'm going to get the thread, I'm just going to stretch a piece across, you know, to make it straight where I want it to go, and then I'm just going to take a few little tacking, couching stitches to hold it on. And I think it'll still have that smooth look to it, but it, I just don't know how they got it to look so smooth like that without having those long pieces of thread on top. So now that I know how to do that, I'm going to bring it out. But I like to stitch, you know, just according to what the seasons are. And right now I'm into fall and Halloween designs. So I'm going to bring this out in the spring or maybe, you know, when I'm done doing some winter projects. And I'm going to bring this out again when I'm, I don't know, when the mood calls me. I could never stick to a rotation. I don't know how those of you that do it, I'm more power to you, but... I have to stitch what I feel like stitching. I can't just stitch something because it's next on my rotation. I just wouldn't enjoy it that way. So that's that one. Okay, now next to my, this is my next one. This one actually I think I might have started before I started Feasting Frenzy. This one is, let me pull it out so it doesn't have a glare on it. This one's called Eagle's Majesty by Dimensions. Had to look to make sure. Gold Collection dimensions and that's oh excuse me my nose um that's my next kind of oldest whip that I've had and I know why I have it as a whip still and not a finished project I stitched it on the fabric that it came with which from day one I did not like the color of that fabric I don't know why I didn't swap it out and I just thought you know what would I do with it so I might as well use it and I, from day one, have not liked the color of this fabric, and I still don't like it. And now that it's getting kind of the oil and dirt on it from my hands, it's looking even dingier. So this is where I'm at on it. And it comes with this sort of baby blue-grayish, blue, baby blue slash gray Ada. And it's also 14 count, and I think I had mentioned that I'm not a big fan of working on 14 count anymore. I love the way 18 count looks. So if I really had it in me, well, I couldn't because I'd, I'd have to swap out the thread, but I would love to start this over again with some beautiful hand-dyed fabric in a bluish color, which I have in my stash now, and do it on 18 count. And another thing I've learned is that 
Um, I sort of like to reward myself with my favorite part of the design, save it for last. And if you notice in this, the most interesting part of this is the eagle. And I've already stitched it, and so I'm having a really hard time bringing myself to go back and stitch on rocks and water. And, and I don't know, just kind of the boring background. I wish I would have started on the background first and saved the eagle for last. Then maybe I'd be motivated and I could reward myself at the end of the project with working on the eagle. But it does have some, uh, it comes with some blending filament for the water, which I think is going to be really pretty and give it some sparkle. The reason I got interested in this pattern and had to have it is because there's these online bird cams that I had come across one year, and it, the, it's the, maybe some of you have watched it, it's the, the, the excuse me, in Decora, Iowa, they have a camera on an eagle's nest, and you can watch these li this live evil cam, eagle, eagle, <laughs> evil cam, <laughs> okay, eagle cam that goes 24-7 and it you can watch these eagles, they lay their eggs and then they, when the eggs hatch they feed the babies and they bring food to the nest and I don't know if you're into that kind of thing, it's really just spectacular. So starting in about February is when they, the, the mom start, lays the eggs and I don't know, every year I just I have it on and I just leave it on in the background and I just love watching that eagles and I just fell in love with bald eagles. So that's why I decided to stitch that. I said I have to stitch an eagle because I just love them so much. And anyway, so I've been watching that eagle cam now for three years. I watch every every spring. Okay, next up. This is my I'm going to just stick with the bird theme because, yeah, I do stitch other things besides birds, but not many. But this is actually a very new whip that I just started this spring, and I only worked on it for a little while. I'm sorry, I didn't start it this spring. I just started it in August. I started it last month. Now, this is not the, this is just a photocopy because I make a working copy, so this isn't a great picture of it, but, oh, how does it go? This is called Orchids and Hummingbird. I love hummingbirds. So that's that pattern by Dimensions. My husband actually bought me that. He just surprised me with it. It just came in the mail last summer because I was on a mission to attract hummingbirds to my yard. And I tried and tried and tried and I could never get them and with just a feeder. So I ended up planting a bunch of flowers last summer. Um, or I went. I ended up planting like toward the end of summer, planting some flowers, and and uh, sure enough, all I had to do was plant flowers that hummingbirds like. Because the next day, I had a hummingbird show up to my garden, and I was absolutely thrilled. Maybe I'll insert a picture. I took a photo because I also like to photograph birds. That's my other hobby, and I think I was going to link a put a link to my blog. I have a blog of all my bird photos, but I'll go ahead and insert a picture of one of the butterfly. I, I'm sorry, hummingbird pictures that I took when it came to my garden. I was just so excited, and that was last summer. And so my husband bought this kit for me. And so far, I got this done on it. Let me fold it here a little bit so you can see it better. There. That's showing up okay. So as you can see right here, there's an outline of where the butterfly is going to go. But I'm going to save the butterfly and the hummingbird for last, and I'm going to get all the orchids done first because it's sort of repetitive and monotonous. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get all that done. And this one, I just went ahead and used the fabric that came in the kit because it was 18 count, and I like 18 count. But once again, I could have probably used a really nice hand-dyed fabric on this. I don't know why. Just... Sometimes I just hate to veer away from what I'm supposed to do. I need to get over that. So there's that. Orchid, hummingbird, and orchids and hummingbird. Hummingbird and orchids. What is it? Orchids and hummingbird, it's called by dimensions. And last Christmas, I started a kit. It was after. Thanksgiving is over. I usually want to work on Christmas ornaments and um, Christmas related stitching. So I picked out this one. 
This is called Santa's Feathered Friends. Those little, those chickadees. Look like maybe a little, little chickadee in his hand there. So cute. I love this. And it's small. It's just a little gold dimensions kit. And I worked on that, I think, just the month of December last year. And then I started working on, if you remember from my last one, the little sheep virtues that I got for Christmas, I started the, those in January. So I had put this aside. So I'll bring this one out at Christmas again. And this is so far what I have on it. Done. And you can see that okay with the light. I'm trying to get the window to shine on it. Yeah. Love his little eyelashes. This is the first time I realized that I have ever stitched a face, a human face. So, yeah, I think it's pretty cute. So I'm excited to get that one back out again, but I gotta get my got to get the fall stitching and Halloween stitching out of my system, and I do a lot of that. I try to do a lot of it. Okay, and this brings me to my last whip that I just started last week, and I'm going to restart it. So what I'm showing you today is actually going to be restarted, but it's this one right here that I've had in my stash for about two or three years, and every year I want to start it, and I haven't yet. This year, I'm doing it because I love it. Okay, it's called Glory of Autumn by Dimensions. And I think it's just really beautiful. I would love to have that hanging on my wall. I don't know why it's taken me so long to get it started, but just look at all of these scrumptious colors. Okay, they're a little tangled at the moment, but I don't know. Can you see? Let me pull it behind here. Yeah, there's some really great colors in there that I love. They look better in real life. It looks like, it seems like my video has a bluish tinge to it. White balance is messed up on it. So, anyway, yeah, these are a bit tangled. I know you, those of you that do dimensions kits, all manage your threads a different way. Some of you cut them off of these things. I noticed uh, somebody had done that and I actually like these. They don't bother me too much. I mean they, they sometimes they look like they're gonna get tangled every once in a while. You just you know comb them with your fingers. It's like combing long hair. You get to touch your floss. Us stitchers were weird aren't we? Obsessed with touching floss. But anyway I don't mind these cards. They're very, very cool actually once I learned how to deal with this sticky stuff but you know I realized that you just grab one very simple. Take it to the end, separate it, pull your little floss out, and then I'm not doing it, but you, you take it, and then you just pull it all the way to the card, and then, then pluck, it just plucks right out. Very easy. And yeah, I don't mind them. Like I said, every once in a while you just have to comb them to keep them from getting tangled, but it keeps it organized. I like it. Yeah, okay, it's looking kind of a mess right now. Anyway, I didn't realize I didn't even show you my project yet. Got a very minimal start, and like I said, this one I did swap out the fabric for. I swapped it out. Now, the original one calls for 14 count ivory Ada is what came with it, and I thought, oh, I'm going to swap it out for 14 count um, Fiddler's Ada because I used that on, okay, I thought I had used that on this, and this is so soft. I forgot to mention this is um, 18 count uh, Fiddler's Ada from Charles Craft, and it's and the 18 count is so soft. Well, I thought I had used 14 count on that, so I swapped this one out for 14 count. Uh, and how does it go? I'm working on the upper left-hand corner. So anyway, that's all I got done on it. And I realized that once I realized that my harvest basket was on 18 count, not 14 count, I went and searched some out, and that's where I was at at Joanne's today. I actually, they had three rolls of it there by Charles Craft and I got it. It's so soft. So I'm going to start this one over again on 18 count oatmeal fiddler's cloth. And um, I think I shouldn't have a problem running with uh, having enough floss because going from 14 count to 18 count I'm going to have more than enough floss in the kit to get it done. But I just love 18 count. So that's what I'm going to do. And hey, I ventured out a little. I didn't use the fabric from the kit. So well, I'll keep you posted on that. Do an update of it. Now I have two UFOs, 
and some of you may say, hmm, what classifies a UFO from a work in progress? And for me, it's because I'm pretty darn sure I won't ever get to these again. But I'm not completely 100% sure, so I'm keeping them right now as UFOs. The first one, and I'm going to have to post a picture of this from online because I don't have a picture of it actually, it's a Teresa Wensler, and it's called The Schoolhouse. And this is what I've got done on it so far. Okay. So can you see? So I'll show a picture of it and then I'll show you what I've got done. Now, this was the first time that I think I tried gridding because I knew that it was, this was going to be a challenge because any of, any of you that have done a Teresa Wensler know that she pretty much every thread is blended and pretty much every square is just yeah not my thing not my thing I thought it would be my thing but it's not my thing so it was very I don't know this is just too tedious for me I like dimensions they have just the right amount of detail without being too much into it and I don't know I may get back to this someday sometimes we just reach different parts in our different times in our life where we're ready to tackle more difficult things but it's a beautiful picture of a schoolhouse it's just full of blended threads and you know what size wise I mean look at it. this is tiny this is like it's probably equivalent to one page of a head design so I may may get to this one someday so I'll post a picture of what that looks like and um yeah, just don't know. Just don't know about that one. Not going to call it never, but probably not. And I have a heaven and earth design. When I joined the forum, the Cross Stitch Forum, everybody was working on heaven and earth designs. And I kept going to the website, and I just never found anything I really cared for. Now, don't get me wrong, I love watching all of you stitch all those beautiful dragons and fairies and all those, you know, fantastic stuff. It's just not my style to do it because I just... I you see, you know, we all have different styles. That's what makes the world go round, right? So I love looking at those. Same I feel the same way about Mirabilia. I think I'm the only I feel like I'm the only stitcher out there that's not doing the mirror uh, Mirabilia. Uh Nora Corbett. Who else is there? I don't know, I just it's not my thing yet. Maybe maybe I'll change my mind, but you know, doing all the fairies and all the, the beautiful women, I mean I could see how it would be fun because it's kind of like paper dolls. You know, you get to dress these women in these beautiful beaded gowns, and I can see that aspect of it. But uh, maybe when I've stitched every bird pattern out there, I'll probably switch over to something Mirabilia or something like that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, I love watching all of you stitch them. So where was I at? Okay, so I was on the forum, and everybody was always doing these heaven and earth designs, and I just never saw anything I liked. Never, Nothing ever appealed to me. And then... Um, what was her name? Anya Kai came out with uh, last year a bird pattern and I think some of you may be working on it or have seen it. It's called the Autumn Owl Trio. Now when I saw that I absolutely fell in love with that pattern. Number one, I loved the little owl that's holding the Starbucks cup because I always have a Starbucks cup in my hand and I love owls. So I love that. So I went out and bought that pattern. and. A little later on, she she released, I think, a quick stitch of just that single owl with the Starbucks in his hand. And I wish I would have just waited because I think I would have bought that. Maybe there'd be hope for me ever finishing it. But I went ahead and I was so excited because I thought, oh, I'm going to do this now. I decided right off the bat I wasn't going to stitch all the background orange. I thought I would just buy some orange fabric. So that's what I did. I bought orange fabric and I'm just stitching just the owls. I went out and bought Q-snaps because I had never had Q-snaps before. I had never gridded before. I had never parked before. So a lot of new stuff on this, okay? First time head, first time using Q-snaps, first time gridding, first time parking, and first time using Krennic. So everything was a first time on this. So I, I delved right in, and I can tell you now that I have stopped working on this. Well, you want to see my progress? I'll show it to you. Because every time I look at it, I'm actually amazed that I even got this far. So here's my fabric. It's a it's kind of a hand dyed. I can't remember from which else. So it has kind of a and then dun 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 dun. dun. Okay. 
So you can see the little sparkly Krennic. Yeah. So I think it's adorable, but I had a heck of a time. What ended up happening with this, I even bought a magnifier. Oh yeah, I bought a magnifier light to work on this. So I have found out since then that I don't like Q-snaps. I know, I think I'm the only one out there that doesn't like Q-snaps. I think they're just too big and too heavy, too big to hold. I am a hoop girl. So if I ever I did go back to this, I would use a hoop. I wouldn't use Q-snaps. I did not like gritting. I just did not like anything about it. I didn't like taking the time to do it, and I found that I was never even using the grids anyway. So, and then I tried parking, and I'm not much of a parker either. So I have found that I didn't like Q-snaps, I didn't like parking, I didn't like gritting, and I do not like confetti. So this is a UFO. I may go back to it someday. I don't know. I mean, I'm proud of how much I got done, but those stitch, so I'm doing, oh, I should probably say I'm doing tent stitching. Oh gosh, is this 25 count? This looks like 28 count. Maybe it's 25 count. I'll have to go look back and see. But it's tent stitching, so I'm not even doing full cross stitching. So, there it is. Let me try and get some sparkle by shining it to the right. You can see the sparkle in his little eyebrows there. So I never even got to the Starbucks cup. But anyway, that's a UFO. Do you have anything you'd like to say on the matter? Feel free, but <laughs> it's cute. I just, I don't know, it's not for me. I was going to say something else about it. I don't remember what it was. Hmm. Well, oh yes, I think I was just going to say that I'll post a picture of what the finished item, what the finished project looks like, because once again, I think I just have it online, the picture online. So if I didn't say that already, then I'll post a picture of what it looks like when it's done. And, gosh, I think that's it. I don't know if I'm going to do a stash video yet because my family, the rest of my, fa my family is getting ready to come home. They're gone now and my house is probably going to get louder. So I may do my stash video at another time. Um, or I may film it at another time but add it on to the end of this with my editing software. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I feel like there was more I had to say. But I don't know. Um, hmm. I hope you enjoyed my fire my fake fireplace. This is great. I got this at Costco last year. We bought this. Um, we're remodeling our basement and we bought that because we thought that's going to look great when we get our basement done. But that's been a work in progress for a while. And um, we had that sitting in a box and my husband and I just last weekend said, hey, let's, let's set that up and enjoy it now. We'll move it to the basement or get another one in the basement. But it's great. It actually has this yeah, it's got a remote control. So let me show you this. Actually, it's kind of cool because you can change colors to blue. So you got these background, and then you can change colors. Let's see, oh, if you look down by the flames down there, the embers change colors too. Purple, blue. Off. I don't know. I think it's just really cool. I love things like that. Um, and in case any of you want to see, uh, I had mentioned the electric guitar. This is my this is our electric guitar that we have. So I haven't even practiced it since I made that video. So maybe this weekend I'll get it in. Anyway. <laughs> And cool. Got this cool little stand to set it in over here. If you look on my Mac and there. This little stand. Cool. <laughs> okay, I I was just doing that because I was thinking there might be something else to do, but I'll just add it on to the end. And maybe I'll even add a few cute bird photos on the end. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll start ending beginning and ending my just because I assume everybody out there loves birds, but I know they don't. So anyway, I'm rambling enough.
hope everybody gets some stitching done today. That's what I'm going to go do right now. I'm going to go work on that. Get a new, get new, uh, my new start, my new, okay, let's try that again. I'm going to go and redo my Autumn Glory and get it started on the new cloth so that I can enjoy and immerse myself in some beautiful fall colors on this beautiful fall day. All right. Bye. Until next time.